Welcome to the Assist Podcast. I'm your host, Zach Schwartz, and joining me today is the worst I am soccer forward of all time, <laughs> Sophia Jardone. <laughs> Sophia, how are you? I'm doing good, Zach. What about you? <laughs> I'm doing well, Sophia. Uh, tell the people a little bit about yourself. Well, I mean, I'm a junior at UCF, flow grown from South Florida. Um, I'm not that bad at IM soccer, <laughs> <laughs> except one game, maybe. Um, other than that, you know, like to watch and play sports just as the next person, you know, Barcelona fan. So anyone Big liking win Real Madrid, please just stop listening now. <laughs> <laughs> Big win today. Yes. And then you're also studying to be an MD. Yes. As well. Or, or DO, I should add. Yeah, well, either. <laughs> some, whatever, of our, whatever some of our friends. Yeah. Like anyway, um, I brought you on today because we we're kind of talking, wanted to get you on here and um, find someone to talk about. And so we're going to kind of discuss some Netflix uh, as a company rather than just, uh, a regular, just a regular kind of movie review thing we've kind of been doing here. And also the fact that Disney streaming is coming because some people are aware and are very excited as I am and how that will kind of affect the landscape. Of everything that's going on. Yes. So, just wanted to start off with the recent direction of Netflix, because this kind of all happened a couple weeks ago, maybe. All the Marvel shows, which includes uh, The Defenders, Daredevil, Iron Fist, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, and I think most sadly, The Punisher, were all canceled. At the same time, um, were you surprised at this? I was... Surprised at the Punisher, maybe because I've seen the first season and it's really good. I haven't seen the second one yet, so I was like, you know, why are they taking off all these shows? Jessica Jones too is pretty good actually, mm-hmm. and um, my dad watches Daredevil and he likes it. But now that I realize that Disney owns Marvel, it makes so much sense to yeah. pull them off of Netflix now because they're setting them up mm-hmm. for their service. So yeah, and I know I never watched any of them, but I know the Punisher and Daredevil had a legit fan base yeah. behind them truly and the, they were upset to see him go and also uh, I don't know I don't think Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has been pulled yet but I just thought about that but I'm it seems sure. like they're pulling more and mm-hmm. uh, more off of Netflix at least and I think um, I'm not sure which side of the agreement it is or they're just not getting renewed uh, but I think it makes sense for Netflix because um, Netflix has definitely had success, uh, which we'll talk about in Netflix originals now and mm-hmm. their own stuff. They're really becoming a content creator themselves rather than being a host for other channels, uh, content. And even though these were quote unquote Netflix original shows, we all know, uh, Marvel and then at a larger point, Disney, mm-hmm. uh, loves to have control on things that are associated with their brand. So I can, I can understand why Netflix wants to have wanted to get rid of this and maybe bring in some other uh, content in that space. Yeah, I think Netflix maybe was um, reluctant giving those shows away, especially with some of them having the huge following, and that means more streaming. But now that you mention it, they could try to start their own brand, much like Disney has done with like the Marvel comics and like their own mm-hmm. Disney original movies, shows, whatever. Yeah. So, I mean... They can't try to copy, I guess, the superhero aspect because you really can't deviate from Marvel or, you know, in another case, DC Comics without entirely coming up with your own right sort of superhero plot line and all that. So Which has taken maybe 80 years to develop yeah, for, exactly. for those companies. <laughs> uh, so they don't have that much time. But yeah, I think, um, you know, one space they can attack, obviously, and it's one they've been seeing success. Um Bird Box, Bandersnatch, mm-hmm. Fire Festival, TV show uh, You, which we've chronicled a couple of those on here. Um, that kind of stuff where it's their content, but it's also um, storylines that make some people kind of uncomfortable in a way. It's almost not necessarily just reality TV, but or fantasy TV, but it's you know kind of hard hitting to appeal to maybe certain people that want to see that and want um to see those kind of stories told um in a different light rather than um just kind of going with the general kind of format of a lot of reality tv these days 
Yeah, I think um, with Bandersnatch and Black Mirror as a whole, that whole series is like, I guess an extreme of reality, but you see it already. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know if you've seen the episode of, in Black Mirror where it's um, the people have social scores over their heads and you can swipe like five stars on people that you meet in public. And I mean, people do that already on Instagram, you know, Twitter, Facebook. of Tinder. liking. Yeah, Tinder, t- too. <laughs> Tinder. Well, to a larger extent. Yeah, and course. like with those scores in the in the show or in that episode came a better quality of life. So if you had like a five-star rating, you would get more discounts, better living. But if wow. you were on the lower spectrum, yeah, it was, I mean, you weren't getting, you know, good interest rates on homes or you couldn't even live in a nice neighborhood or people would look down on you too. Yeah. So it's it's evident to see that even today. Not as literal, but like on the an path abstract. There, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've never seen any uh, Black Mirror except for Bandersnatch, so I knew it was a little bit... I knew mm-hmm. they incorporated a little bit into the into the uh, video game movie kind of thing um, yeah. with that, but obviously not the uh, storyline. I've heard a little bit about it, but not too, too much. So I think it's interesting because Netflix really has a big opportunity here to kind of like you said uh make their own brand um because as i alluded to earlier disney's coming uh their streaming service is coming I, mm. we don't have a name right i couldn't find a name i don't think so okay. do you i don't even, i haven't even seen a release date or anything either i think they said later this year okay um so obviously disney um everyone thinks disney like this mega thing yes and also the fact that they own all these things which i didn't realize for a while obviously they own star wars which mm-hmm. is why episode seven eight nine coming out they own marvel uh they own espn and and abc yeah so that's all the espn movies and they're also working on that merger right now with fox mm-hmm. um so that's a lot a lot yeah. of content <laughs> and they also <laughs> have a big stake in hulu too which is also interesting oh i didn't I know that about. it's like 30 percent. i think i saw I'll, I'll get the exact numbers on it in a second, but yeah, I think it's it's right around there. So yeah, so I think obviously Disney has the resources. Oh, for sure, and they definitely this. have the people interested. I mean, there's, I mean, any family with young kids, if they just buy the Disney streaming service, you have the unlimited <laughs> Disney princesses, superheroes. You know, I mean, the classics of you know Little Mermaid. Aladdin, all of that. I mean, I'm assuming they'll even put um, TV shows that they have on their, you know, regular daytime channel, as along with um, like original movies they've come out with. I mean, it's it's definitely competitive. I'm just interested in seeing how much they charge people to have it be where, oh, you know, like we have Netflix and Disney or Hulu mm-hmm. and Disney. So I think. One of the big things that they'll have to worry about is um, not overcharging, but making it somewhat competitive where people are interested and they're not going to not have it. Right. So, yeah, that's the thing I think that's big, and I'm I'm looking into it a little bit now. Uh, Disney Plus is what it's called. Okay. It's great. Uh, That follows the thing that they just released on ESPN, which is ESPN Plus. Mm -hmm. And so, actually, with their uh, merger of Fox, they will own Hulu outright. Oh. Or majority of Hulu. So it sounds like what they're going to do is make it Disney Plus, which will be, like you said, the princesses, the family mm-hmm. friendly kind of content. Probably still Star Wars, I would guess. Um, Probably. And maybe like the some, Clone Wars and all that. Yeah. Uh, which the Clone Wars are amazing, and I'm definitely going to watch <laughs> that still. Thorne knows. Thorne's out there. He knows that him and I are going to watch <laughs> that together uh, when it finally comes out on Disney Plus. Um, and I think probably Marvel, too. It's not exactly. Um, Stay here, but then Hulu and of course uh, and ESPN Plus, which I have, which is just a ton of sports mm-hmm. and all the uh, thirty for thirty movies and such, uh, will be on the same platform, but is uh, individual subscriptions. So okay, so they'll keep Hulu as an entity then, mm-hmm. and then okay. So here it says Hulu is expected to continue to stream content from the broadcast network. So. Um, NBC, Probably, yeah, uh, CW, which I know because Smallville is on mm. there, which I'm watching now. Finally, 18 years after it came out, <laughs> um, and um, stuff like uh, CBS, obviously. Okay. Um, so I guess that's the model there, which is interesting. I guess you could also um, stash some edgier kind of like uh, shows on Hulu as well if you're wanting to make Disney Plus the actual. Mm-hmm. Um, children's thing i think it's interesting um i have hulu i just got hulu uh through spotify which is mm-hmm. I, that deal better not that yeah that's great <laughs> um 
I think it's interesting because um, I wonder how many people will be able, one, they don't have price up, obviously, mm-hmm. uh, to be afford Netflix and Disney. Yeah, um, I know. Because Disney, for a lot of people, is going to be a must. I know I'm ESPN, big ESPN, and Marvel, and I, I'll, exactly. I watch every Star Wars movie. So what does yeah. that mean for me, then? Uh, yeah, exactly. That's the, See, I'm, I'm the same way in that aspect. Mm-hmm. But what I just thought of now is if they acquire all of Hulu, it'd be interesting then. Well, I guess they already announced a Disney Plus, but they could have taken everything that they had with Netflix, put it into Hulu, and then say, all right, well, you can have Netflix that has their limited whatever, or you can get Hulu where it's all the stuff that used to be on Netflix, but now it's here. And, right. You know what I mean? But they, I mean, keeping them separate could still be okay because there are actual Hulu originals, which I'm actually... Are there? I, I believe I'm so. I'm new to Hulu. Um, I mean, you can look. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I feel like I have heard of certain shows that might be particular mm-hmm. to Hulu itself. So I'm wondering if those, if, I mean, if, if I'm right, will stay there or they'll somehow, like, cut those and then make it more, like, Disney or just basic yeah. cable channels. Yeah, it'll be interesting what happens because basically it's going to be a subsidiary subsidiary of Disney mm-hmm. now, uh, like ESPN is, uh, like Star Wars and Marvel are now, which will be really interesting. So it's just that Disney's going to eventually just split up the world with mm-hmm. Apple and stuff. Although obviously, like we talked about, I I don't own Netflix. Um, Katie may or may not have the Netflix. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I I really enjoy a lot of stuff on Netflix though. So that's the thing. Like I don't know um, um, how you're gonna be able to do all that. But the other thing is that cable TV and satellite TV itself may be gone, which mm-hmm. will bring down the price of everything. I was I was just gonna say that people can completely ditch the the Direct TV, the Comcast, all that, and just say, you know what, we're gonna. This family is going to have entertainment through Disney and Netflix, Hulu and Disney, whatever you want. Because, I mean, I even see it now. Cable, I mean, people only watch cable for what, sports? Yeah, so. And maybe the news channels, but that's about it. I mean, TV sucks during the day. I'll be honest with you. (laughs) Hold the thought about why they watch sports. Or why they watch uh, cable TV. Because I have a point about that I made to my grandfather today. Oh, God. (laughs) First, though, I want to say my family just did that. We just switched to Sling. Mm-hmm. Um, because we had direct TV and, um, even though I didn't pay for it, I was like, we're getting kind of screwed here. My mm-hmm. dad's like, you're right. The frugal, <laughs> the frugal Schwartz. So we just made the switch over to sling and it, it's really amazing how, um, it's different, but still like a lot of, uh, what you can have. Cause there's so many streaming services. I know oh, I, I think sling's just the most famous. And also I thought I had the best package of, okay, sports loving guy and, Suburban mm-hmm. Mom, yeah, <laughs> which is exactly HGTV how HGTV <laughs> and ESPN and, <laughs> and Bravo. It's exactly how my family is. Um, so Food Network, all that stuff, yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, it makes a lot of sense. The only thing that's uh, would be a hindrance is the uh, internet. But my internet, at least at home with all my friends, we'd have maybe seven friends over, and the internet would just plummet, Crash. plummet. So the, the, the Schwartz Wi-Fi became a joke. A lot of people in Ohio know that are oh listening is probably know what I'm talking about. <laughs> they know about Schwartz Wi-Fi. But apparently the streaming's been fine from that. So that's okay. so that's that. But your point about um, cable. So you're right, is that a lot of people... I only would need um, CBS, ABC, um, what else? Fox, all that mm-hmm. stuff because of one thing. Sports. The NFL. Oh, yes. Because <laughs> the, the NBA is on TNT and yes. ESPN, which mm-hmm. you get on Sling anyway. You, what you don't get on Sling is ABC, NBC, Fox, and um, CW. So okay. those are like the... And CBS. I don't know if I said that. Oh, well, Probably. Th- those like five like lo- the local channels, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, so... Other than the fact that the Arrow is on CW, and that's my thing. Um, the only reason I would ever need those is the NFL. Now, I'm not sure exactly what year the NFL broadcast deal runs into, but I think we've talked about this before. I think so. There's yeah, one no, person, one, one particular company we have not brought up that has their hands in everything that can just outcompete anyone for the NFL rights, and that is Amazon. Yes. 
if Amazon, because oh I gosh. also have Amazon Prime. Uh, yeah, well, I do my too. family does. Sorry. Well, uh, okay, yeah, <laughs> the my family, family pays does. for it. Uh, and I know they get uh, they watch Marvelous Miss Maisel with it, but obviously mm-hmm. I love the two day shipping. So <laughs> you even get Amazon Prime in this, but if Amazon starts broadcasting the NFL, which people are like, that sounds ridiculous. Well, cable's screwed. That's yeah. the, that's the fact. Cable is done because you have a generation of people like myself who really don't watch the news. It's almost like no. newspapers still have a little bit of a role in this, but it's going to go the same way. Because what's what's the first thing you look at in the morning? You know, social media, pretty much. Or text messages. Yep. But mainly social media. So that's the thing. If a news story happens overnight, I either have a text from someone, mm-hmm. or it's going to be on my timeline and Twitter in five minutes, or on my Instagram. Or on Snapchat. See, what a... I, like... The shame with getting news on social media is it's either correct or it's not. Yep. So I think if if cable, if the only thing left on cable is, you know, like the Fox News Channel, MSNBC, whatever, any news channel you can think of, they're going to either have to start streaming on one of these, you know, other sites or they figure out a way to just not completely go online, but maybe... I don't even know. I mean, not YouTube channel. Like, cause, I, mean, yeah. I mean, they could, actually. They People do reasonably. watch YouTube mm-hmm. a lot more. And there's um, there's the Red Table Talks that yep. um, the Smiths do. And then, what is it? Even Facebook, I think, has their own little videos. No? Like, the, yeah, the they, Ball family, they all have yeah. their episodes oh, yeah. on Facebook. I mean, mm-hmm. I could definitely see... That going in a direction where they start heavily influencing their media. I mean, they do it now. You know, you follow any of these people on Twitter. It's like, oh, breaking news with a depict, like a description and then an article. Yeah. So people either could start doing that more to kind of gear away from the 140 characters of somebody like from something they heard from 10 people. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because it's either... You know, straight from the source, or it's, oh, you know, I actually saw somewhere this, but it's, like, a misinterpretation of, you know, like, that game um, Telephone or whatever you played as a kid, Mm -hmm. where by the time they get you you get to the last person, it's a completely different message from the original. So, with cable deteriorating like that in the news, I think that would be somewhat detrimental if it stays in the state of inaccurate information online, but if there's a way to sort of integrate it to where you're still getting what the equivalent to watching it on tv then i mean that's it for cable there's literally no reason to have it right so i think something that uh, to your point that you know uh online you find a lot of um slanted information and just sometimes vaguely incorrect you can just get two people like in your timeline you can get um two stories at the same time basically from other people and for instance i don't follow any of the kardashian crap but what's going on right oh. now with <laughs> chloe and tristan like i've yes. seen so many people crap on jordan and then also crap on chloe and i'm like i don't know what's going on i don't care because i don't want to see any of this yeah so that brings me to my point is that we all know that uh the networks themselves so NBC, CNN, Fox, whatever mm-hmm. all have a bit of a slant, correct? Yeah. I'm not going to state them, but we all know that. Yeah, of course. So I think part of it is also realizing that you know, Twitter, Instagram, whatever will have some sort of slant to it or what you can also do is just follow whatever you want to follow. Now, is mm-hmm. that probably a good idea? Not necessarily, I would say, because we're already pretty polarized as a country as it mm-hmm. is. We've got, I think that's something that's gotten um, really bad lately. Um, and I was just telling my brother, I'm like, sometimes, Max, the middle is a, a great place to be. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> however. Switzerland, man. Exactly. <laughs> Neutral. Exactly. So I just wonder, because you're right, there needs to be some type of integration. There needs to be some type of, dare I say it, um internet kind of watchdog to kind of talk and just be like look because twitter doesn't care twitter won't ban people over anything really i'm sorry youtube won't ban people they don't care um th- i mean the only thing recently was facebook right the whole scandal of using your information yeah. to 
I mean, that's getting solved with. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, Mark Zuckerberg that's getting is another. squared out here. Yeah. Zuckerberg is something else. But uh, the point is if we're going to, like, because our generation already without this stuff, as we're getting older and older, uh, we already use Twitter for news. Mm-hmm. I, I already curate my timeline to be sports, superheroes, and people from my hometown and a couple UCF people. So it's like, at what point am I just being naive, which I mean, I already am, mm-hmm. but you know, am I not getting the full story? Because even as a kid, when I was home, I never watched the news. They turned on and I go downstairs and go do whatever else yeah. I want to do. I didn't care. So I, I just wonder, because I think you're right. Uh, I think sports are leaving cable soon. Mm-hmm. I just, think so too. I don't have insider, uh, insider experts telling me that, but I'm just guessing. I mean, Amazon has too much money. Um, well, that and I mean, not to snitch on anybody, but if you literally look up, you know, any NFL, NBA, soccer, whatever, blank versus blank live stream, you will find a link. <laughs> I'm not snitching on anything, anyone, you know, pleading the fifth on this, but it is possible to already avoid paying for subscriptions to channels, yeah. turning on cable. I mean, a lot of us don't have a mobile TV with us. I mean, actually we do. It's our phone. However, exactly. We don't have actual cable. It's just whatever we can get on Safari or something. Right. And then that's it. Yeah. So the internet is just too powerful. Yeah. At this point. So that, I mean, it's, it'll be interesting to see where it all goes. I I do think, I think cable's done. I think Disney Netflix will be able to occupy the same space. Mm -hmm. Hulu will be whatever. I don't know. It's, it's, it's an interesting time because I, this is going to be completely trans, um, form the landscape of streaming and how this all goes, and yeah, with the what I just thought of now with the news thing too is that we're like we're a generation of wanting to know things now, fast in the minimal amount of time because we want to do twenty million other things. Yeah. So reading something, reading a full little thing of one hundred and forty characters is something I'm more inclined to do than maybe see a title and then click on an article and read the full article. I mean, there are times when I do just because the title is misleading or it's something that I actually really want to know in depth. But a lot of people don't, you know, like they're scrolling and they're like, oh my gosh, you know, this story, this is terrible, whatever. And then you keep going, except if you click on it, it's probably like a smidgen of what the actual thing is. But no one ever knows because not that many people take time to click on the link, and then if you try to have any form of dialogue, it's just shooting you down, you know, like... Right. People, I don't know, agreeing to disagree is something that I think more people could benefit from. You know, as you were saying, um, how the news channels have their own sort of leaning, following both sides of the spectrum, you can make more of an educated decision of, you know, what are these people saying yeah. What are these people saying? And then mm-hmm. what is some objective source, like the facts or the statistics, whatever, that is like maybe corroborating with one or the other. And then you can say, oh, well, you know, I agree with these people, not those. You know what I'm saying? Right. Exactly. So, yeah, it's just interesting because obviously you have the ability to curate your own timeline mm-hmm. in a way. And it's no matter how much Twitter tries to mess it up by saying, this person liked it, therefore it's here. And it's like, I don't yeah. want this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't want it. Um, or... Uh, Instagram sponsored ads, obviously. Oh my god, so. the government is listening. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, I went, always. <laughs> um, Katie was uh, getting a different uh, record player yesterday, and I went on Urban Outfitters uh, just to check it out because she was getting it in Ohio, and I looked at it, and all of a sudden today it's like right around ten o'clock. Urban Outfitters advertisement on ESPN. Yes. I'm like, okay, or right around six thirty p.m. every night, I get a Chipotle ad. And I'm like, you guys aren't slick. I'm gonna, <laughs> buy, I'm gonna buy Chipotle when I want. <laughs> At Which this is, rate, you better already send it to me if you're going to give me the ad. <laughs> like, granted, I want Chipotle a lot. However, yeah. most of the time, um, it's just, yeah, so that's, that's a whole other issue. I Maybe mean, for this shout-out, you might get some free Chipotle, though. Nah, they, 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 <laughs> no one listens to this crap. Chipotle <laughs> National, if you're listening. At any Chipotle, please. Zach eats about, what, two burritos in one sitting? Maybe well, one I, and saves I it tried. for later. I oh, tr- you tried. That's right. Uh, Yom Kippur last year, I tried, and yes. I almost felt sick. <laughs> it's terrible. Terrible, yeah. That'd be like 2,400 calories. Can't do that. No. <laughs> okay, so you didn't select a game, which is okay. I kind of didn't send the games to you also. It's okay. So this works out. So I'm just going to do what I did with Emily last week and ask you things. Okay. okay. 
Go for it. (laughs) What superpower would you most want to have? Okay. Honestly, flying. Just because, you know, airplane tickets are not cheap and I really want to see the world. But I also hate sitting in traffic all day. So if I can minimize travel time to get to point A to point B by just, you know, hovering over the crowd, so be it. I think it's pretty cool. Did you listen to the uh, episode with Sal? No. When he said, when him and I agreed that flight was the dumbest superpower to have. Oh, great. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) No, man. I don't know about you, but I ain't got money to buy in first class. (laughs) Neither do I. So that's a fair point. Um, So then, what what did you? What would you say then? Oh, the coolest superpower. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's hard. Um, I'm trying to think. So, like, X-ray vision's kind of dumb, too. Might be a little creepy, depending on... Uh, that, too. Yeah, that, that <laughs> how too. That'd deep be, yeah. you go into... I mean, if I'm seeing your bones, fine. But if yeah, I'm seeing, but uh, <laughs> we're seeing other things. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Super speed would be pretty cool. True. In the that sense would be that pretty it's cool. very, like, general, but you can apply it to a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like i do that. And Anyone that watches a flash... <laughs> I, understands. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe you can run into a different dimension or two. Yeah, that stuff, or like just daily mundane tasks. Like, I, I mean, I'd have my homework done so quickly. It'd be oh, amazing. Oh, for sure. <laughs> It'd be amazing. <laughs> Pre med wouldn't even wouldn't even be hard. No. Oh, do 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 do. And I thought I'd find one instantly. Okay. What is your favorite school subject? Favorite school subject, PE. No, <laughs> no. Uh, all right. Seriously, um, I think one of the classes I've enjoyed. Actually, I'll say two. Two classes I've um, enjoyed so far are um, abnormal psychology, which I'm taking right now, and physiology. Mainly because both of those, you know, physiology tells us how our body works, why our body works. Mm -hmm. which is really interesting because when you know the why and how you can think of ways to, you know, I mean, what preventative medicine is today to counteract to, you know, not have diabetes or high blood pressure or, you know, I mean, something as simple as obviously not smoking cigs can prevent lung cancer by Mm -hmm. some astronomical percentage. And, and with the same with abnormal psychology, because, You know, now there's, you know, they've considered it in the MCAT. They're, you know, medical schools are starting to get real that there is a psychology component to some of these, um, even some physical symptoms, but also in the way that people are, the way we think. I mean, I think it's going to be endless with the research. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, some of these disorders we're talking about, I mean, something as simple as, you know, phobias or anxiety. I mean, they're so general because people can... um, they can, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, exhibit these Mm -hmm. um, disorders or um, diagnoses, but everyone is so different because you can have anxiety over public speaking, anxiety over, or, you know, what agoraphobia is of not being in a comfort place, you know, going outside of your home. Like, people, you know, people get anxious about that. And it's, Mm -hmm. it's crazy how, where it stems from learning and then treatments are always, you know, getting to the root of the problem, talking about it and coming to terms with it. So mm-hmm. I think that like being in this class has been pretty cool. It's awesome. Yeah. Good. What is your or who is your favorite actor or actress? Oh, man. All right. Hmm. I'll try to do both, maybe to help narrow it down. Okay. Favorite actress. Man. Let me think. <laughs> Man, that, that's a hard one, actually. Actually, all right, let's switch that. Let's switch the actor really quick and see. Um what's someone that I've seen in many movies that I like? You know, Will Ferrell, I think, is a pretty funny guy. I I ha- I am a fan of a lot of his movies, you know, Step Brothers, <laughs> mm-hmm. 
is obviously an iconic one. Kicking and screaming. Blades of Glory. Blade. Oh, Blades of Glory, definitely. My parents didn't let my brother and I watch the, finish that movie. Oh. That movie and Were the Millers. Were the Millers. Oh, like, Were the Millers. We're very so younger. Funny. Made it like fifteen minutes in. Yes. So uh, maybe favorite actor off the top of my head right now, Will Ferrell is up there. You know, some of his older movies. He's a comedic genius. Um, favorite. Favorite actress? I'm not sure. I think there's a lot out there that really, um, maybe, if I had to choose one, and I'm saying this just, you know, superhero movies, but Gal Gadot, man, she's, she's a badass. (laughs) She's she's awesome. You know what I'm saying? Like, her playing Wonder Woman, it's just amazing. People don't know know that she's in Fast 4, 5, and 6, too. Fast and Furious. You say that, now, yes. I didn't even realize that. There you go. <laughs> she and started out in one of the biggest franchises and people. Vin, Vin Diesel love interest and Wonder Woman. Yes. Pretty yes. Cool. Oh my gosh. I didn't even think of that. It's amazing. How excited were you that the Jonas Brothers came back this week? Oh man. You don't even. I tried. I tried to stay up till midnight for the song, mm-hmm. but you know, when you got to wake up early, <laughs> you don't stay up late anymore. <laughs> so I fell asleep, but I listened to the song and I watched the video and I say mm-hmm. the song, I didn't know what to expect if I'll be honest. Um, I don't think, I don't think it's bad. You know, I think it's pretty decent just because I didn't have any expectations. Um, I think I was talking to a friend about it and she said that she read somewhere that they started comparing them to like a new age Maroon 5 okay. kind of ordeal. Okay. I don't know if we can make that assumption yet because, you know, the Jonas well Brothers. The Super Bowl. Yeah, you know, the Jonas Brothers. <laughs> They started out as, I mean, a, a boy band. I mean, yeah. I mean, now they're grown men with wives. I mean, Joe, you know, Joe's fiance is yeah, Lady Sansa of yeah. Game of Thrones, you know. Oh, yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> so it, I'm interested in seeing how their music has now evolved to their maturity and to the lives that they have now. But yeah. How disappointed are you in me that I only knew, I knew none of their names, and when I saw a picture of Nick Jonas, I said, oh, that's the guy from Jumanji. No. Zach, I feel like, man. That this is true. You're, like, if you're I'm trying doing, to make this up, this You're happened. doing the world a disservice. How did you, man, like, not even in middle school, like, interacting with, like, the other girls in your grade, none of them ever mentioned, oh, my God. The I, was a, I was a shy fighters. youth. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> well, I hope Katie is well-versed. And introduces you to the wonderful songs that they came out with. Yeah, Nick Jonas, pretty good yeah, actor. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and Jumanji, he's pretty good. Playing that old guy in the game. Oh my god, no. Uh, I, I literally looked at the picture, I was like, that's the guy from Jumanji. And Mate looked at me, he's like, dude. Yeah, bro, that, that, like, that's Nick Jonas. Like, <laughs> well, that, that's, that was my reaction to the Jonas Brothers. Oh my I god. Like, I mean, I understand if you didn't know Kevin as well. Kevin was always maybe the odd one back then because he was the oldest and like since their um fan base was mainly you know prepubescent teenage girls and probably anyone around 13 to 15 Mm -hmm. was their fan base of course they i mean i gravitated to nick and joe more kevin was more of the somewhat older teenage audience that had more of an appreciation for him so kind of felt bad but now i mean Who knows? (laughs) And, you know, everyone's gotten older. Everyone has a more refined taste. Yeah. Nick, Joe, and Kevin. Gotta remember that. Yes. Nick, Joe, and Kevin. (laughs) (laughs) Basically. So, um, going into the story a little bit, it's it's a little famous among our friend group. You know Chad Ochocinco. A man (laughs) I have followed on social media for a long time. Was a very famous NFL wide receiver. And I think one day last winter break, not this past one, but a year ago, um, you were telling me about this. And then you just sent me a picture of Chad Ochocinco's head. And I was just like... Yes. So, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) How that started is, I mean, maybe most of you listening know, but he's always challenging people to play FIFA. Mm -hmm. I mean... That's that's one of his things. So my brother had been rep- like you know replying to him, being like, no, you know, like I'm better than you. Play me. Yeah. Finally, one day he responded, and Andy looked at me. He's like, you want to go to Chad Ochocinco's house? I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, let me put some clothes on, you know, yeah. like let me make sure I don't look like a bum. <laughs> so we go over there, and Andy beats him. 
I don't know how many times they played, but, you know, Andy was good enough for Chad to be like, yo, you know, I will be playing you more often. <laughs> and, you know, Andy, Andy has his phone number now. Um, I've been, um, I've been to his house again. I think the last time was... Maybe maybe it was the last break when I sent you that picture. Yeah. But, yeah, and, I mean, the, when we showed up the first time, the guard gate, I was like, Andy, what are you going to tell this woman? Because, <laughs> like, well, I mean, what the heck? Because it's you just know, two college Chad, Chad Johnson, he just kind of rolls up, and he's like, um, yeah, I'm here to play FIFA with Chad Ochocinco, and she, like, she she rolls her eyes, and she's like, another person like like this man keeps inviting people she's like you know what i hope you beat him (laughs) even the security guards know Mm -hmm. that this man just invite and he even goes to random people's houses he could be in whatever state and i'll be like so i got like a 30 minute intermission between you know my daughter's track meet who's trying to play people like what (laughs) so yes that i you know i do have a selfie with him um and he's a lot closer and knows him better Andy, Andy, I don't know if I've told you this. He was actually, um, you know, Chad, um, uh, he's been, I believe he's already started, but he has his own Twitch streaming. Oh, no, I didn't so see I, yeah, I'm pretty sure he has it now. So he asked my brother, you know, do you know anything about Twitch, the mic, whatever? And my brother's like, you know, like, I can help you out. So he mm-hmm. took him to like Best Buy one day <laughs> to look for all that stuff. And he gets it, like, he gets in the car and, Terrell Owens is in the car. Holy shit. Like so, Andy. Oh sen- my god! <laughs> Andy sends me a picture. He's in the back seat of Chad Ochocinco and Terrell oh, Owens, Owens driving. Oh my! God. And my brother, you know, he of course he tried to play it cool. He didn't want to be that one person like fangirling. Yeah. So the only picture he has is that picture in the back. And you know, To leaves, and Chad's like, "Bro, why didn't you ask to take a picture or something?" He's like. Oh my god! But like, I don't want to. I don't want to seem like such a loser. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, holy shit, that's crazy. It is. Yeah, I wasn't there for that. Yeah, (laughs) that would have been a lot cooler too. But yeah, man, he sent he sent it in a family group chat, and my dad's like, "Is that Terrell?" I was like, "What?" It's insane. It was. It was amazing. Yeah. The last time Andy and I played FIFA, I told him if I beat him. I would I would be allowed to be taken to Chad Ochocinco's house. Yes. So um, I haven't been. That offer hasn't happened yet. So I'm kind of <laughs> waiting. Um, no, you know he when he was in Orlando, he definitely hit him up to play. So I think you know next year he'll be um he'll be at the station in his own kind of house ordeal. And Andy's not gonna invite me to. Yeah. To no, no, no. House. Maybe he will. You know no. he reached out to Sal too. Him and the roommates he'll be living with all play FIFA, so I think definitely when whenever Chad is in Orlando next year, that'll be the but like, hub yeah, I beat this kid that beat you, Chad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, we beat Auburn and Auburn beat Alabama, so therefore we are <laughs> national champions. I know Chad's a Real Madrid fan and Barcelona beat them three times yes. this year, so Yeah. Uh, he is I'll, a Real I'll wear my fan. Barcelona jersey there. Chad will throw me out of the house. You know, I I think he's more of a Ronaldo fan though because I think oh, the so last he's time, wearing Juventus jerseys, yeah, I think um maybe this was about the time that he made the switch, but I feel like Chad tries to use um Juventus a lot in his FIFA games. Okay, so I think and uh, I think he's a Ronaldo fan, but he also has I think started to play in the Ultimate Team area. Oh boy! So he's okay. always opening packs and he's like, man, why can't I get these players? And it's like. Man, you got the same luck as everybody yeah, else. Yeah, I was gonna say like you just gotta spend money until he, you he, get Ronaldo in a pack. He definitely man. spends money on FIFA. Oh, for sure. Yeah, he's a millionaire. And I mean, EA loves it too. I mean, oh they yeah. Sent, when I was in, when I went to his apartment or whatever, he had this UFC looking WWE championship belt, but it was just like FIFA, EA, like they love it. They love it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm gonna have to work on Andy to get yeah. to make that happen. <laughs> Yeah, bro, just hit him up. <laughs> oh, Sophia, thank you for coming on. Yes. It was a lot of fun. It was a pleasure to be on the assist. Um, you know, I don't know. I hope right. everyone has a great day. You know, peace and prosperity. <laughs> Positive vibes. <laughs>
Thank you for listening to the Assist Podcast. If you like the show, go drop a five-star rating. That really helps us keep the show going. If you want to stay updated with all the podcast episodes, hit the subscribe button and also go follow our Twitter, which is at assist underscore podcast, and our Instagram, which is now the Assist Podcast. And you can write any emails, uh, any suggestions you have to theassistpod at yahoo.com, and we'll see you next week. Mm